Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes because it's a sleep session and sleeping with your eyes open is a bit scary really <laughs> for, for other people I knew someone once I've known lots of people but the, this particular person and he we was out drinking it was a group of us and we went back to the flat it's a long time ago and he was there staring at me just sitting there and it was really weird I thought oh I've pulled but no it's, uh, he was asleep I said no he said yeah he's asleep I said I don't believe you he was snoring but I thought he was just pretending so how they uh, proved to me that he was asleep was by drawing on his face with a marker pen and stacking putting stuff on top of his head like some playing cards I think a stapler and sort of dressing him up really putting whipped cream giving him like a whipped cream beard and uh, I think dipping his hands in honey for some reason I, I mean I probably would have just uh, just given him a nudge would probably would have been enough to prove that he was asleep I didn't really need all that but yeah he's, he had his eyes open whilst being asleep I mean is that, that and Andre does that sometimes he's asleep but his eyes are like partly open and I suppose I can partly understand uh, the animal kingdom you know that some animals would perhaps have their eyes open to be half awake in case of needing to hide from elephants or something like that but not that ferrets have a huge amount of contacts with elephants I, I, you know I don't know quite what the uh, connection there could be if at all oh, there was a weird vibration happened then it was like a almost like, like a miniature little dog scratching itself you know that kind of like vibration Oh, I don't know where that was from. So, uh, <sighs> for those that have not listened to this uh, podcast or you know these recordings before. Uh, I should mention Andre is my boy he's a, he's a little ferret that runs around sometimes when I'm making recordings I do talk about him a little bit um, and I kind of have to be a little bit careful when I say he's my son but also let you know that he's a ferret so when I say that he jumps up and he's sniffing my crotch you know that he's a ferret it's, you know it doesn't sound quite so strange 
and these podcasts are basically aimed at me just talking for about an hour about stuff so you can just close your eyes and fall asleep through the the boredom and through the calmness of my voice talking about stuff and that pretty much is it and I've done 220 something recordings now and I've been doing this since I think it was January or February 2018 and we're now in October 2019 so technically this is the longest running series of recordings I've ever done it's the most of any podcast of just one recording like one um, topic one topic you know yeah so I really didn't expect it to last this long I thought maybe I might do 10 or 20 or 30 and then I'd get bored and I'd just stop because 30 is quite a lot but then I was getting feedback from people telling me that they liked it for some reason they really liked it so I've continued the only reason really that I have continued with this podcast is because of the positive feedback that I have received and the fact that people are listening to it every day every, you know I say I don't know if everybody's listening to it every day but not everybody in the world I don't mean that but I get about 10 at the moment about 10,000 downloads a month on this podcast so it shows how it's grown because I'm now about 93 92 93,000 no no it's 80 something thousand maybe 89,000 downloads on this podcast in uh, well it's actually only been up in its current format since November 2018 so it had a lot more downloads before that so yeah it seems to be going pretty well and that's the reason I I bore myself more than I bore anybody else. Really, I get bored when I start talking. I was like, oh. In normal conversation, I actually stop midway sometimes. When I'm talking to someone in real life, I just say, oh, I've had enough of that. That was boring. And I apologise to the person. Sorry about that. That was boring. I won't, I won't continue. I just stop mid-sentence saying that, oh. I can't catch myself because I don't really want to bore people in a kind of a, a real life situation 
I don't mind doing it in this because this is what this is for. Um, it's just like if I was a singer, I don't mean the washed uh, sewing machines. I mean a singer as in singing. The I wouldn't want to be singing all the time. You know, I'm sure Whitney Houston, when she wasn't singing, uh, I'm not sure what else she was up to, but I bet when she wasn't singing, she wasn't, like, talking to people, but singing to them. She, I'm sure she just, like, talked. Perhaps I should think of a different singer. I loved Whitney Houston. I proper loved her. As in, loved her. I remember in 1987, I was watching, top, I was watching the Wogan show, I think, which was on BBC One. It was Terry Wogan. And he was a big, big star, television star in the 80s and possibly 90s as well. I can't remember how long the Wogan show went on for, but I'm pretty sure it used to be on pretty much every night of the week. Or weekdays about seven o'clock and it'd have it basically just be interviewing people like stars you know singers and actors and um, comedians um One of the funniest interviews I remember him having was with the bloke from Naked Gun, the star of Naked Gun, you know, the films and the TV show. I forget his name, he's a very funny actor. He was also in the Airplane movie and he was in, I've said lots of, lots of films, but he was very funny. Leslie Nielsen, that's it. Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen? Leslie Nielsen. But isn't Leslie a woman's name? It is, was Leslie Nielsen, I'm pretty sure. You know when you say a word or a name, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound right. That's what I kind of had with uh, the president of the American uh, states back in, you know, a few years back with Barack uh, 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 Bama Ramo. I couldn't say his name. Abarak Obama. Obama Ram um, Bo Obama, Aboma, Aboma, Obama, and Barrack, and I just I don't know, just one of those names that I just kind of just a Barrack, a Barrack, Barama, Banana Rama. I just kind of used to find it difficult to remember his name I did like him I mean I didn't know him but I think out of all the presidents in my kind of lifetime I would say that about Obama Barama was the coolest president ever like 
in my lifetime. The Clinton was quite cool, but I don't know. It's the uh, the blow thing, you know the the blowing, you know the you know what I mean. It's the trumpet, the trumpet he played. I just it put me off a little bit um, but I do remember though the headlines it's weird that I remember this but I remember the headlines when uh, what was it was it Jeremy Clinton Jerry, not Jeremy, not Clinton. Anyway, of whatever his first name was, Horace, Horace Clinton, and I remember George, who was the current president before Clinton won the election in I don't know what year it was 1990 was it about 92 93 something like that and I remember the headlines and it just the headlines was Clinton licks Bush that was the headline and I was just Sometimes it's worth walking into a news agent just you know go out of your way for about three minutes just to have a look at the headlines because some of them are quite amusing. Clinton licks Bush, and it's quite weird because that did seem to overtake his presidency, president, presidents, presidency. Predecessance, precedence of the presidency with his shenanigans and his exploits. But for me, it was that damn trumpet. See, I'm not prejudiced about against trumpets. I mean, they all they all do look the same to me, trumpets. But I just. I'm not really a, a lover of trumpets, and you know I'm, I'm. Don't take it personally, if you love blowing on things, you love blowing, blowing uh, trumpets. Then good for you. I mean, I, I'm happy for you. I'm not planning any time soon to write a poem to you about trumpets I won't be doing that so I'm not that emotionally involved but each to their own we all like certain things don't we I like toasted tea cakes and you may say, yeah, but what's that got to do with trumpets? It's not the same thing. I never said it was the same thing. At no point did I say, oh, trumpets are exactly the same as toasted tea cakes. I didn't say that. So why, why are you pulling me up for something that I didn't even say? It's, that's unnecessary. You know? I was referring to things that we like. Of course, a toasted tea cake, nice to eat, but you try and get a tune out of it, it's difficult. You, know, you can't turn up to join a band. Yeah, I'd like to join a band, please. What instruments do you play? Oh, a toasted tea cake. No, you can't just turn up with that. Mind you, it would be handy, wouldn't it? They're very light to carry around. 
a lot less uh, troublesome than a cello or a piano. Imagine having to carry that all around the country, or even a trumpet. You could travel anywhere in the world with a toasted tea cake. All you need is a toaster when you get there, or a grill. Because you don't need a toaster, because although they say toasted tea cakes, they don't come toasted. In fact, I think they're just called tea cakes. But you don't have to eat them with tea. They do taste nice with a cup of tea. I remember the first time, my biggest memory of eating tea cakes is, was two things. Um, when I first moved into my very first flat when I was 16 years old, I lived above the chip shop. And it was April 1987-ish. And my friend Neil, that's my friend's name, Neil. I don't, I'm not saying my friend, Neil, wasn't a command. <laughs> so my friend Neil came round and I didn't have a lot of stuff in that flat because I didn't own a lot of, really have any belongings. Basically what happened is the contents of my bedroom that I originally like lived in, like when we had a family house, uh, like the wardrobe and the bed, which I hadn't slept in a bed for nearly a year, been sleeping on a camper bed in the living room of my step grandmama, which isn't ideal when you're 15 or 16. It does definitely interrupt with your with your love life. So I, you know, anyone being able to just walk in at any time, you know. Something about living rooms, isn't there? Lounges and living rooms. It's, if the room's got a television in, we don't need to knock. It's like, yeah, if someone's, if you've got a teenager in bed, you need to knock. Anyway, I moved into this flat. My stepmom moved away. So I, they, they moved out of their flat and moved to flew away to the other side of the country and I was in this flat and my friend Neil came round and it was a Sunday morning maybe about 11, 10, 11 and Wurzel Gummidge was on television and I had this black and white television and I was watching Wurzel Gummidge on and I made a cup of tea, one for me and one for Neil. So I had a kettle. And I had these hot crust buns. And I call them hot crust buns because that's not the correct way to say it. It's hot cross because they've got crosses on them. Because they're kind of Eastery. Because... Uh, Toasted tea cakes were very popular in biblical times. So I don't know how they toasted them, though. I imagine. I don't know. I'm not sure how. If they had toasters back then. <laughs> but uh, these hot cross buns, I think. I probably didn't have a toaster myself but I used the grill of the oven you know the hob or the grill bit and I kind of cooked them not cooked them but grilled them and we had some hot cross buns each I think I bought them from probably from Tesco because there was a Tesco opposite me 
where I lived that would make sense to go there rather than to travel to the next town and go to Morrison's so yeah it makes sense to go to the one that was closest um, yeah it probably was from there if I remember it was a big pack of maybe eight which means we would have had I would have given him two and had six for myself because I've always been greedy that I probably would have split it down four four or five three something like that and I remember eating the hot cross buns and for the first time in you know, pretty much nearly a year I was getting to sleep in a bedroom on my own without interruption which I had done I think on the Saturday night before the Sunday morning And even though I didn't have anything uh, as far as like belongings, I had a few tapes of, uh, you know, albums and stuff. I didn't have much stuff. It just felt nice to have, just to have that bit of space And my friend Neil and me, we had these hot cross buns, or I call them hot crust buns. And we nibbled away, had a little nibble, a cup of tea, uh, a bit of a kiss and a cuddle, you know, just standard stuff. Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> God, imagine if he's listening to this. Oh, wait a minute, that never happened. And it was just really nice because it's just one of those quite nice memories that I've got uh, in my head. And yeah, I suppose it was quite nice to have somebody to share that with because I didn't have many friends uh, from school, you know, that I'd, because I'd left school at 15. And I didn't have, I didn't leave with many friends. And Neil was one of the only people that still kind of stuck around and still wanted to know me. And I knew a few people, but he, he kind of was more constant, if that makes sense. Including when I was living in... My step grandmother's place. He used to come and visit me there, and he used to visit me. He used to come to my house when I was a kid, when I was living at home. And I'd go around his house, and he even used to visit me when I was staying with my dad when I was eighteen. Yeah, so he kind of he's the only friend from school that actually stayed friends with me after school like once we left and you know kept visiting and you know yeah I didn't I don't think I really appreciated him back then or didn't appreciate that he was the only person I still used to see people now and then and you know I had little times when I'd be friends with people and go out drinking and you know and I met a lot of people working in a chip shop I met a lot of new people that I, I got to know but he was the only yeah he was the only constant really that continued from school 
and even in 1991, after I moved to London, I came back to visit him. Well, I came back and I gave him a visit and he was going to France or he was going travelling through Europe and he asked me to go with him or if I wanted to go with him and I said no because I'd moved to London to pursue a a career in stand-up comedy that was why I moved to London Um, so I didn't go with him And I think he sent me a letter. I'm pretty sure he sent me a letter telling me that he'd gone away and, you know, something like that in the early 90s. I don't think I've seen him since then. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen him since that time. But he, I visited. I did visit his mum or his mum and dad in about 96 because I just I thought he might be there I didn't know if he'd like come back or whatever and so I I saw his mum didn't see his dad but I saw his mum and she was just like she remembered me and everything and that was nice but his dad was really nice as well when I moved into the flat because I didn't have any I didn't have any cutlery I had a few bits that my nan gave me and he also gave me a bunch of stuff as well so that was nice Um, again I probably didn't appreciate it though because I was 16 and I didn't Well, maybe I did appreciate it, but I wasn't that interested, <laughs> if that makes sense. I was, uh, I don't know what I was. I was 16. It's weird to live on your own at 16. Because technically you're not really an adult. I know in in America, 18 is, um, well, 16, in England, 18 is an adult, 16 isn't an adult anyway, but 16 year olds can pretty much do everything apart from they can't smoke, they're not allowed to drink alcohol in pubs. They're not allowed to have a mortgage. I'm not even sure if they can buy a lottery ticket. I think 16 is the cut off for that. I think 16 is fine. But when I was 16, you could buy cigarettes at 16. You still had to be 18 to buy alcohol. That's in England. Uh, I think the law is still the same. Not still, but I think the law's always kind of been the same in different places, Scotland and Wales, but I might be wrong. But a few years back, they put the age for cigarettes up to 18. That was quite a long time ago, actually. But it doesn't seem long, that long ago. And... The age of consent for uh, romantic things here is 16. I know in America it's 18. And for, for, for gay men, it used to be, it was a different age. It was... I think it was 21 and then it went down to 18 but uh, that's one of the, the laws when they put the bill through to try and get it down to lower 
that went through very quickly in the uh, House of Commons and the House of Lords they skipped that through very quickly they all seemed very happy to get that to get that down so that 16 year old boys could um, partake without the politicians getting in trouble oh I didn't mean that did I say that and uh, so that changed but the age for smoking cigarettes went up to 18 and what is tw I'm thinking of 21 but I'm probably thinking of America because the thing is you can't drink alcohol until you're 21 in America is that right? it's uh I can't, I can't imagine that really. 21. It's, uh, well, I can imagine 21 because I remember I once was 21. It's, uh, it's a while ago. And I could never get served anyway. Well, I could. You just had to go to the right pubs. Just needed to know which pubs served underage people. And uh, they're the ones that I went into. Because even though I was, well, I was underage, so yeah. But even when I was 18, I only looked probably about 16, 15, 16. Which is why as soon as I was able to grow a beard, I did. Because I wanted to look older. And now all I want is to look 16 again. No, I don't. I really don't. Well, can you imagine being 49 and looking 16? That sounds almost illegal, doesn't it? Just, just to be, be very strange to look 16 to be all spotty again I don't really no I don't fancy it but then I look at pictures of myself I see there's nothing else I'll just, just let you know I look at pictures of myself it's lovely no I look at pictures of myself um, I don't see, I don't have many pictures, but there was a picture of me that I've got at my 18th birthday party. And it was around my nan and granddad's. And there's a picture of my nan, my granddad. Um... I think that's it or uh, me as well and there's a cake and I'm holding a knife and I'm uh, just about to put the knife into the cake and I look at myself and I see just think oh I did not look young but then I was young wasn't I Yeah, you know, I was very slim, very slim, very young, and from the look of that picture, my skin wasn't too bad either. But maybe it was the excitement of eating cake. You know, my skin just cleared up. That doesn't make sense at all, does it? <laughs> Good. I'm just glad I didn't get a trumpet for my birthday. See, there was a there was a reason why I mentioned all this. Because it goes back to the trumpet. 
that uh, the bloke that licked Bush used to play. Isn't that weird, the connection? Clinton licked Bush then Bush licked Clinton like the, the younger one and then I can't really connect Obama to Obama Obama Obama, Obama. I can't connect him uh, to Clinton. Let's see if there's a, a connection. Um, or Bush to to Obama. Uh, no, I can't. However, Clinton liked to play the play the trumpet. And who's the current president? Trump. Et al. Et al. I don't know what et al means, but that's doesn't that mean, uh, you know, Trump, 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 et, trumpet. Yeah, all kind of fits together, really. It's almost like a jigsaw, a nicely nicely fitted together jigsaw but with a picture that doesn't make sense and the pieces that are wonky baby baby we light my fire ooh ooh and do my only desire Relight my fire Cause I need Your love mm -mm. The other time With the tea cakes That uh, I have quite a Fond Memory about Is When I was little Well when I was younger I wasn't little I wasn't big But I wasn't young wasn't old, but I was probably 14, about 14. I used to go into the Wimpy with my friend Dean. And we used to hang out with each other a lot of the time. All through school, we was pretty much best friends. Um, as I was friends with... Uh, Neil as well and I had a few friends at school but he, they Dean was a friend all the way from junior school so from the age of um, nine let's say nine to fifteen and I know six years generally you could say well that's not a great amount of time it's only six years we'll say that to a six year old it's a lifetime to a six year old six years a lot can happen in six years seriously you try standing on one leg for six years and you see how long six years is you try and listen to this on repeat for six whole years. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I don't want that responsibility. For six years. Wow. 
when you're 14 is quite a long time or 15 is it's a fair amount of time the thing is my friend Dean we didn't fall out of friends really it's just he was way more mature than me and he knew what he wanted to do and I was a bit of a messer I just didn't know what I wanted to do I had no I had zero um, vision or motivation or anything I didn't I had no interest the only thing I liked was martial arts that's the thing I loved and I lived in a little town and there was no jobs <laughs> doing that if I could have got a job in like a dojo somewhere like a martial arts club that would have been because there are martial arts clubs that run full time around the country that would have been a dream for me so if I lived in cold, where I do now if I lived here then I would have well first of all I'd have been training at that club more than likely and then I would have said to them like give me uh, you know let me work here even voluntary I don't care it just to do something you love doing that would have been brilliant but yeah I did I didn't do that because that option wasn't there I wanted actually to go and live in Australia and study monkey boxing because I had a monkey boxing book that I got because I used to get this magazine every every month I think it was it might have been every week it might have been every two weeks I don't remember but it was I can't even remember what it was called uh, martial arts something and they they did this article on this man that he moved to Australia. No, what he, no, what he did he went to a Shaolin temple in China, which I think China's China's not far from Scotland, and um. then after studying monkey style kung fu like monkey boxing he moved to Australia which is not far from China and he did he kind of opened a school there teaching people and that's what I wanted to do and had I the money then I would have loved to have done that so yeah kind of other than that I didn't really have any I wanted to be a singer I wanted to be like a musician not a musician I wanted to be a singer I didn't really want to play an instrument although I did learn three instruments whilst I was at school three instruments four instruments five if you include the recorder so everyone learns the recorder I think don't they when they were a kid but I learned the violin when I was in junior school and then when I was in the Sea Cadets, I learnt the bugle, the glockingspiel, and the drums. 
So I kind of did both all three of those at separate times during my time in the Sea Cadets. And out of all of them, the glocking spill was the probably the most challenging one. The drums probably in some ways the most fun but a lot to carry around. You know, there's um, not just to carry to and back from, uh, you know, the sea cadets in the evenings. Because I think we used to practice at home. Not just that, but it was the whole trying to walk. Not, I'm not even joking, I mean, I could walk, but I mean, because you got the drum, and it was just, I think it was just one drum leaning against the left side of your front, so the left leg, and it's just, and trying to march in the same as everybody else, you know, left foot, right foot, but at the same pace, and my left foot at the same time as their left foot. But I quite liked the bugle. But I wanted to do the drums. I think the drums appealed to me. The bugle... Um, it's kind of spitting into the into the mouthpiece and it's well, I haven't played the bugle for quite some time but if I was to pick one up and have a little play I reckon I reckon within a short time I could get a tune out of it. It just take my mouth a bit of time. It's like I know how to do it. Because unlike a trumpet, which has those, the knobs that you play around with, the, you know, thing that you touch, that you push down, that are on top. Um, the bugle is basically everything is done by your your mouth and your tongue I don't, I don't mean that your tongue pushes down the buttons on top <laughs> you call the knobs on top your tongue like stretches out and plays it <laughs> that would be weird um, what I mean is your tongue makes different shapes and um, it controls the, the sound of the bugle and it's very yeah I quite liked the bugle I think the, the best part of playing the bugle is the practicing so I always had that up my sleeve as a last resort so you know if there was an argument and my brothers wouldn't back down I could always have the laugh yeah, yeah I could always have the last laugh because I just play the bugle and annoy the hell out of all of them. I could play for hours and no one could do anything. You couldn't concentrate, watch television, hear the television, read or anything because they just hear me. That's all I'd hear for hours and hours. 
and yeah I wouldn't have liked to have had to listen to it in fact sometimes during rehearsals at Sea Cadets I just have to say please can you stop stop playing they say yeah but it's rehearsals I know but come on seriously if you heard yourselves what do you mean heard ourselves what about you I said what about me they said well well, you are pretty good I said I know and so are you they said yeah thanks it's nice to hear that means a lot I said yeah that's okay Um, do you want to dance they say yeah we just all dance together around an open fire sometimes we'd have marshmallows we wouldn't be anywhere near the fire we'd just eat them outside because I like marshmallows don't need to have them burn and hot just all smooth and gooey you can just eat them can't you that's a good thing about marshmallows because they're big but you put them inside your mouth and it's almost like you're eating nothing but you are eating something but it also feels like it's nothing but it tastes nice like something and it's it's a kind of unusual texture and I used to go into the the wimpy and have my tea cakes I used to have a cup of tea and two tea cakes and it used to cost me probably about a pound And what was his name? The man that ran the Wimpy was a friend of my brother's, my oldest brother. They were friends. I can't remember his name. But he was cool. He was a real cool dude. And I was friends with his either his brother or his cousins that also worked there and in fact I was probably better friends with, with him because he used to like chat with me and stuff um, outside of the Wimpy but what was his name not Ted Bert not Bert Tim I don't know but he was this really uh, he loved George Michael. Absolutely loved George. He, I think he wanted to be George Michael. He might not. He might have changed his mind. You know, a few years later, I don't know. But he really wanted to to be George Michael because in those days, that was. I suppose Wham, yeah, Wham was still around, but George Michael was also making his solo singles as well, like Careless Whisper and um, I don't remember the other one. And I, I, I suppose a lot of people wanted to be George Michael because he was so brilliant, so talented, and you know, he was just lovely. What was his name? Was it Ted? Sid? You know his name might have been Sid. 
It doesn't sound right though. But it was really nice. He lived upstairs above the Wimpy. And I went up there a couple of times with him and my brother and the friends and stuff. And because I think they were in a band or they, or he wanted to be a singer. And I wanted to be a singer. So I played him, well, I played everyone a couple of my songs that I wrote. And, uh, I don't know, I think they, I'm not sure how much they laughed, or if they laughed or didn't laugh, I can't remember. But that's the weird thing, you know when you're like 14 or 15? Or let's say even 15. And my oldest brother was four years older. So at 15, he's 19. So he's an adult. 15 still a kid 19 still a teenager 15 teenager but there's a it's quite a difference between really I suppose because at 19 a lot of people have left school and stuff like that mind you I left school at 15 so I was uh that's why I've been so successful now. So I've got a head start. <laughs> that's why I'm. That's why I'm so. Uh, that's why I'm so rich. Oh, before I go, I should share this. It's been scientifically proven. Um. This is a, a neuroscience. I study, um, I study psychology just in my own time. I mean, I don't, you know, but it's just a subject I'm interested in. So I listen to lectures and stuff like that online. And the studies said that with neuroscience, if you, or this might have been a positive psychology book that I was listening to, I can't remember where it was, I I heard it, it was today anyway, and if you imagine receiving something, or if you, you know, and if someone's got the, the plugs and stuff on their head to measure the brain waves and different parts of the brain that are activated, Apparently, if you imagine giving away something, giving someone something, like giving, helping somebody, imagine doing that. It's the same part of your brain that's activated when you eat chocolate. It's a pleasure. It activates the pleasure part of your brain. And that pleasure is higher than if you receive something. So if you imagine receiving a gift from somebody else, you imagine giving a gift to somebody that you care about, or you just giving a gift to someone else, apparently the level of pleasure is higher when you give than it is when you imagine receiving. And it's the same part of your brain that's activated when you eat chocolate. Isn't that interesting? See? A boring recording with an interesting ending. So I'm going to leave you. I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. And remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.